<laughs> Good evening, fish and friends. Welcome to another episode. As you can see, I've got a box here. Uh, in today's video, if you haven't guessed it, I'm going to be talking about what I've got in the box, why I got it, and taking them out of the box and giving you a closer look. Yes, we are doing an unboxing. Now, a lot of this stuff is going to be geared toward, yes, fall fishing. We've got the fall weather changing. Temperatures at night are starting to drop, and soon these fish are going to be feeding. So, a lot of fall-focused baits here. I'm going to talk about what I got, why I got them. Heck, maybe this will even lead to my top five fall baits for bank fishing or something like that. I don't know. But enough of me yapping. Let's take a look at uh, some of the lures I got and why I got them. Okay, where should we start with this tackle warehouse box of goodies? Well, let's start with these. I got some square bills. These are from Lucky Craft. Now, some of the Lucky Craft stuff can be really expensive, so you have to watch out. I can't afford the real high price stuff, you know, like the Pointer 110s, you know, some of the other jerk baits and stuff. Just a little bit too pricey, but these, uh, these square bills are pretty reasonably priced. They had a good sale on these. So I grabbed a number of these. This is a white shad, you know, kind of mimics like a hybrid bass or a crappie. This is a sexy shad pattern, you know, something you'd be used to in like a KVD 1.5. And those are also great square bills too. Um, any chance you can find the KVD 1.5s on sale, I recommend those. With this fall weather coming up, you know, a lot of folks say, well, I fish ponds and stuff. I can't fish treble hook lures because there's too much vegetation in there. Well, the good part about early spring or later in the fall when a lot of that dies off, you don't have the vegetation to worry about. So you can run some of these. With the fish being up shallow, especially for bank anglers, you don't need a deep diver. So, you know, something like this that dives two to five feet, and you usually get a good number of fish on the square bill. Great fall time lure. These that I'm really excited to try, those are the hybrid bass or white bass looking style there. It's got kind of an iridescent blue on the cheek there. I really like the look of that one. A green pumpkin seed to mimic some bluegill. Pretty colors on that one. I like that. And a color I've had a lot of luck with, that's Ghost Minnow. So not only in the square bill, but they've got some of their um, jerk baits that are a little bit less expensive. I think like six, seven dollars a piece. Find those on sale and they work very well. So that's the Ghost Minnow color. It's almost like translucent, you can see through it. Kind of a dark brown on top there and kind of goes into an iridescent purple. Great for clear water. Moving over next to some rod sleeves because this is a tackle uh, warehouse version. I did get theirs and I actually like theirs because, let me show you, I'll open this up. Got my split ring pliers. Notice they have cutters back there too. Get this baby up and you'll notice on these they have a little elastic loop here. Now that doesn't seem like a lot, but on some of the other rod sleeves that I've used, they don't have that. You slip this on and when I take it in and out of my car, this just comes right off when I pull it out. So with this, hook that over the handle of your reel after you get it on. You don't have to worry about it coming off. So I like those a lot. And I think they had them on a discount, like three bucks a piece or something. So I grabbed a few of those. Okay, next, I did not get this from Tackle Warehouse, but I threw it in there just to show you. I had a bunch of people asking. This is that Daiwa Custom Wind Handle. It's 100 millimeter. It's blue. It's got the wind grips on it. Really, really love that. I already put this on my frog and set up. Got this on Amazon. I think they had one left on sale for 18 bucks. Normally they're, I think, $38, which is pretty expensive. I wouldn't buy them at full price. But for 18 bucks, I got them to try out. I've had a number of people asking about different handles, you know, adding aftermarket handles and such, you know, the little grips. I'm going to talk about that in a video coming up, but I'm really liking those a lot on my frog combo. Moving over, nothing too crazy and exciting here. This is just some regular P-Line CXX. I like this stuff a lot. It's good and tough does have a little bit of memory to it. Some people say it's kind of wiry feeling, but I'm used to fishing fluorocarbon. I think fluorocarbon kind of feels wiry, but you know, it's not a super supple line like some of the soft monos out there, you know, real easily castable. Can be, you know, kind of a little bit memory, a little bit stiffer, but I like it. This stuff is tough as nails. Got some 17 and 20 for my Texas rigs and my jigs. So P-Line CXX, it's tough. I've had good luck with it and it's cheap. Uh, these 600 yard spools, I think were on sale for like 1080. So grabbed a couple of those. These guys will not be any sort of surprise to my channel. These are the Beast Coast Miyagi's. You all know that I am a huge fan of those. Love the Miyagi's a lot. These are in that pro pearl color. Um, I just ran out of those. So I grabbed another one to stock up. But this color, I saw those and wanted to try them. Those are the stalker trout, you know, basically looking like a rainbow trout. Beautiful. It's kind of, you can almost see through it. So a good natural color. We've got a number of spots around here that stock trout. You know, of course, once the water gets too warm, they die off. But in the fall and early spring, when they do those trout stockings, I think this might be pretty money. So excited to try that out, the stalker trout. I've also got some other hooks to talk about too. People ask about the hooks on these. Got some other stuff to try. Now, keeping with that same theme, I got some of these. These are the Beast Coast Creeps. These are six and a half inch. So a little bit larger if you look at the comparison here. See those six and a half inch creeps compared to the little Miyagi's? That's a 4.75 inch Miyagi. These creeps make them look small. So fall is a perfect time to throw some of these bigger swim baits. I haven't really got much into these big swim baits and glide baits. That was something I really wanted to work this year and didn't really do a whole lot of it, admittedly. So 
Gonna try these, a little bit larger swim bait. Got that color, that is the secret IU. Also this color, this is the hatchery born. So again, like a stock trout. This one you can actually see through, very translucent. You hold it up to the light and it looks like a very natural, you know, trout. Doesn't really do it justice. I had to take it out of the package, look at that. Very cool looking, it's got some glitter up top. Kind of see through that belly, very neat baits. Love the Beast Coast stuff. Again, those are the six and a half inch creeps. Okay, something a little new. I had not heard of these. I saw they were new when I put my order in. These are called The Deal from Berkeley Power Bait. This is a Skeet Reese design. I got this 4.5 inch version, a little larger, and then I got the smaller one, which is three and a half inch. You notice there it says to use it on bladed jigs. This 4.5 inch says to use on a weighted offset EWG. So fishing this, you know, just a normal Texas rig. Now the tail here reminds me of Look at that, almost reminds me of the Pit Boss type tail on there. They're real thin, nothing too big and bulky. So it's gonna be interesting to see how these do. Bait fish profile, I almost see me throwing these kind of like, not on my table, but throwing these out on the water. You know, it's kind of like a fluke. It's got a little bit of action there. Interested to see how these do. Kind of a cool little looking design there, I don't know. If they swim well, you could also use them as you know a spinner bait trailer or a swim bait, I don't, I don't know, we'll see. Again, those are called The Deal from Berkeley. Something else that is not new at all on my channel, those are the Strike King Rage Menaces. I love these things for chatterbait trailers. You can use them as swim jig trailers. Actually my favorite, probably on a swim jig. Give you a closer look in case you've never seen one, but they just have the two little rage tails there. You break them apart and that's it. So they go very well on a swim jig, chatterbait. You can even rig these on a Texas rig, you know, throw them around bush, bush, brush. They've got those little cup, you know, the rage tail design that have that little cup that grab on there and flutter on the way down like those a lot but you could just text rig it pitch it around brush use it as a trailer they're very versatile i always carry a few different colors of these got some white for my swim jigs then replenished on the babies that green pumpkin with blue cross swirl i like that color a lot as well moving along i picked up another package of these these are the reaction innovations spicy beavers i love the reaction innovation stuff they make a ton of great lures out there the pocket rocket is probably my favorite stick bait on the market the Skinny and Little Dipper are great paddle tails, and then these. So these are very similar to the Rage Menace that I just showed you. You break those apart, they've got the little feet there that kick. Pretty big cups on them. You know, it's kind of got that craw profile to it. Again, you could just Texas rig this. Uh, I've been using it on the back of a swim jig. Throw it on a chatterbait, kind of whatever you want. But cool little craw design there. I like the way they look. They definitely have a lot of kicking action on them too. Again, those are the Reaction Innovations Spicy Beavers. Back to the Beast Coast stuff, swim jigs. Man, swim jigs are perfect in the fall because a lot of that vegetation is dying off. But the important part is any of that last bit of good, green, healthy vegetation that's rich in oxygen, any of those little sparse patches that you can find are often going to hold a lot of fish. And for me, the swim jig is one of the best ways to attack that. And this swim jig is kind of middle of the road. It's not a crazy, super extreme heavy wire, but definitely heavier wire than most, you know, just the kind of standard run-of-the-mill swim jigs out there. So it's got a good sturdy hook on it. Very cool looking head. I like the big eyes. It's got some of that tinsel in there that reflects in the sun. So a very cool looking profile. Of course, I got the green pumpkin there. They actually call it their pro pumpkin in three-eighths of an ounce, but got those to mimic bluegill. So I could throw that spicy beaver trailer on here, the Rage Menace, something like that. Throw this around where I've got some bluegill eaters and try to catch some of those large-headed bass. Again, the Gorilla Swim Jig from Beast Coast. Now, these next spinner baits were on closeout. Apparently, they're getting rid of them. I don't know if they're just not going to make spinner baits anymore, but this is from Buddha Bait Co. I've used some of their soft plastics. I honestly had no idea they even made spinner baits, but these things were on closeout, and they look really good. You can see the skirts on them there. Very cool colors on them. Got a bunch of different colors in this one. This was in the mouse color. To me, it kind of mimicked, you know, a shad, a bait fish, kind of that gray color. Good sharp hooks on them. It's got a long shank there with your soft plastic keeper. So you could put, you know, a fluke or a paddle tail, whatever you wanted on here as a trailer. It's got good heavy duty blades. The wire feels good and heavy. I like it. So those are the Buddha Baits spinner baits. Got that color. And also picked up this color. This again is that chartreuse sexy shad. Tends to do well on my legs. So excited to try these out or drop them. Going back to the square bills. For you cats that like to throw square bills, but you've got shallow ponds, you say, well, I, you know, if I use a square bill, it just digs on the bottom. I don't have deep places to throw it. Pick up some of these. Now, I'm sad because these were on closeout too, so I don't know if Mans is done making these or if they've got new packaging or whatever, but this is the Baby One Minus. At the deepest, I believe these only go two feet. What's it say? Slow retrieve, the lure will run one to two inches below the surface, kind of like a wake bait. Fast retrieve, yeah, it only goes up to 12 inches. So I had a, a video a while back where I found one of these in a trash pile. 
painted it up with a marker and some stuff, fished it and caught a bunch of fish that day. But I used to fish these back in the day when I was a kid. Loved, loved the man stuff when I was younger. They used to be the, the deal back in the day. But got a few different colors of these. These were very cheap, I think like three bucks. So grab just a few of those, try them out, see how they do. Fish them in the shallows for, you know, fall's a perfect time to do that. Those large mouth are gonna be pushing up shallow, corralling bait, running bait. So perfect time to throw a shallow diver. Again, the man's baby one minus. Back to the old spinner baits. I did grab a couple of the Strike Kings. They had these on sale. You know, these are nothing too crazy or different. You've probably seen these, but these are the three eighths ounce. I got the gold color there. Pretty cool looking. Kind of mimics the shad. You know, some of those golden shiners. Then I got a bluegill color. You know, those are great in the spring around beds and such when the bass hate, hate the bluegill. But if you've got places where all the bass have to eat are bluegill, Fall's a perfect time to throw them too because they're probably going to be corralling, chasing bluegill and eating those poor little dudes. So again, the Strike King Premium Plus Spinnerbait. I like these because if you can't tell, they actually already come with the trailer hook on there. And the skirt's just a little bit longer on it, so you don't have to worry about putting a trailer on these. I don't even think they have a, you know, a soft plastic keeper, but the skirt actually comes out a little bit long. Let me just show you. There we go. You see that? So the skirt actually already looks like a soft plastic trailer on there. They've got the trailer hook, so this dude is ready to go out of the box. Take it out, tie it on there. So that's that gold shiner color, gold blades. Gonna use that in some of the dirty water that I have around here. But I've had good luck with those on my local lake, so be fishing those soon. Frogs, unfortunately frogging season is gonna be coming to an end, but there is still hope to get a few bites because you don't have to throw these to mimic a frog. I got a couple white colors. These are the 13 fishing trash pandas. Now this is a popping variety. Uh, the regular white one was on back order, so I should be getting that in like a week or whatever, but very cool. I'll take it out here. That's what they look like up close. The tail has some little tinsel in it. I like that. You can see it reflect in the sun. I have already fished the black version of this. It's black and yellow, and they call it Hawkeye color. Go Hawks. I like that. I've got to try it out, and they look cool. They walk really easy. Some of the other things, I noticed this, the heat shrink seals. You notice on a lot of the frogs, they kind of get water up in there. They've put a heat shrink tube seal on there to close off that. And I noticed that they don't take on water very easy at all. The other thing is a little different is they have the water spout, you know, when you make the frog pee and squirt the water out of it, it's on the top back of it. So as this is sitting in the water, there's no hole or really any openings to take on water. Um, and I noticed if you're somebody that has trouble with that, these do not take on water easily at all. So I like that. Otherwise it just tells you about the rest of the stuff. All oh, that's pretty normal, you know, the cup mouth. So this is a spitting popping frog. But a good profile, the body's good and soft. You know, one big thing for me is does it get out of the way? Definitely does that once you turn it. So I like it. I've had a little luck on it so far. I haven't caught any big fish. Uh, I lost some of the footage, but caught some small fish on it. Hopefully we'll catch some more, especially on this white color mimicking a shad. Finishing up on the lures, I grabbed some of the Rapala DT series. These are easy to understand because DT6 dives to six feet. DT4 dives to four feet, so on and so forth. So grab some of those. I like the Rapala stuff, or Rapala, however you want to say it. I like theirs. I really don't have many of those crankbaits left, unfortunately. Get one of those baby hung as a bank angler, and you kind of got to sacrifice it to the fishing gods. So restocked on some of these. You'll notice pretty much shad patterns, but I also got a craw pattern. Don't worry, those bass are still eating craws as well. So going to throw some of those with some cranking season coming around, see if we can catch some crankfish. Now the rest is just some terminal tackle here. So of course, you know, paddle tails, underspins, very popular in the fall when you're trying to mimic bait fish. So I got some of these, some of these three aughts to go on some of the Kitex. I've got some 3.8s and four inches. Gonna try some of these. I haven't used the little gold Colorado blade. Uh, the gold color is supposed to be a little bit better in dirtier water. So I'm gonna try those out. No, I'm not gonna be shark fishing with these, but these are the owner beast hooks. These are the eight aught. And if you'll notice, if you're interested at trying the creeps, they do say on there to use right there, ADOT swim bait hook. Now, I like the owner beast hooks because they have such a deep belly, a big deep belly. I know a lot of people ask me on the Miyagi's, Debo, what kind of hook are you using on those? Well, I use a six aught owner beast. I have found those to be the absolute best hooks on the Miyagi. They've got a good wide belly. Um, I throw the quarter ounce for the Miyagi's. They work great for throwing up around shallow cover, you know, sticks, brush, vegetation, whatever you're fishing around. But the six aught owner beast for the Miyagi. So for this creep, can see there I'm not gonna be lazy I'll take it out and show you you see once you screw that in there you have a good amount of room there between the bait and the belly of that hook which is something I know a lot of people struggle with because they'll get them and it's already clear up here you know the bottom of it's like that pressing up against the bottom and the hook is flat up here these owner beast hooks have a much deeper belly from here to here which is nice because when this pushes up through 
you can see on the creep in the Miyagi, there's a slit in there. You can see kind of my hook in there. But that's so when you hook that fish, this part of the hook can go up in there and extend the point of the hook up above it like that. So it gives you more area to actually hook the fish and keep it. So the owner beast hooks, I love them a lot for all the Miyagi and hopefully they work well on this. Has those nice larger upgraded center pins. Those are the large version. Helps from ripping the nose of your bait out so early. So these babies are ready to go. Nothing to do with them. Tie them on and go. Again, that's the owner beast hook. Now I also got the owner flashy swimmer. So very similar. It's got a good deep belly on it. I think these will work well too. So that's just to give the little swim bait a different look. Big swim bait. Give it a little flash with that owner flashy swimmer. So turn this baby into an underspin and see how it does. Still with that weedlessness. So, you know, if you're bringing it around wood or brush, don't have to worry about getting it hung all the time like you would with something where it's got an open hook sticking out the back of it. So that's going to do it, folks. You notice I kind of stuck with a theme. A lot of this stuff was a white bait fish color. And a lot of people say, well, I don't have shad in my lakes, right? Well, if you have hybrid bass like these, if you have crappie, something like this, that yellow and white to mimic them, any sort of white stuff, you can mimic a lot of those other fish that bass are feeding on. So just because you don't have shad in your lake doesn't mean that the white won't do good, especially in the fall. But that's going to do it for me tonight. So I want you to comment below. Let me know which one of these lures you're most excited to see me try out on the water. I'm going to try to get all of them out very soon. Hopefully I've got enough time to test them before uh, winter comes. But anyway, comment below. Let me know which one you want to see me fish with the most. But that's going to do it for me. It is late here. i got to get to bed. So thank you for watching. And until next time.